Coaches, welcome back to another reflection on the U11 boys basketball team that I'm coaching. I want to share a reflection from practice number six and practice number seven for just a few minutes. But before I get into that, I just want to let you know that this coming Thursday, April 7th at 1 p.m. Central Time, I'm hosting a coaching Zoom with Ben Wilkins, the associate head coach for Army men's basketball, and we'll be discussing how Army men's basketball develops leaders, and you can too. If you can't join live, the full replay will be available to coaches who sign up. You can learn more or sign up for that coaching Zoom at the link in the show details. So practice number six. You know, my big takeaway from practice number six was the importance of teaching shot selection. And now I'm specifically coaching basketball, but I think the the things that underpin uh, my reflection here probably apply to most sports, especially group invasion games like basketball and soccer and lacrosse and hockey and any game like that. Uh, But what I mean by shot selection is the decision to shoot the basketball, when to shoot it and when not to shoot it. And I knew going into practice that this was going to be my main focus for the practice. And so I was pretty clear about how I wanted to uh, teach it and the games and drills I wanted to use to reinforce it. And we actually started practice with about 15 minutes, which which was probably too long, but the kids were actually really engaged in it and they loved it, of, uh, of film. It was actually about probably five minutes of me explaining uh, a shot selection scale that I borrow from PGC Basketball uh, that kind of provides a more objective rating for the decision that athletes are making when they're taking shots. So we use the numbers three, five, sevens, and nines. And we talk about we want to get sevens every time and we'll steal some nines. Sevens are um, your shot, the shot that everybody on our team is excited about you taking. Uh, Nines are like wide open breakaway layups, best shots you can get. You don't get them very often, but there's nothing better. Uh, Threes are what we call third grade shots. These are just really poor shots, bad decision to shoot it. You don't have any space, no rhythm. Um, Maybe it's out of your range. And then fives are kind of 50-50 shots. They're the meh shots that um, athletes often take, but they're often what uh, lose basketball teams games. Uh, Just shots that aren't really good shots. They're just kind of the the in the middle ones. They're the 50-50 shots um, that actually go in way less than 50% of the time. So uh, that's kind of a little bit about the scale, but uh, was really intentional about teaching the shot selection scale to them at the beginning of practice, showing them some film clips. And if you want to see a little bit more about that film session, I shared a clip of that on Twitter uh, that you can check out that just shows a little bit how I led that film session and discussion. Uh, Some helpful tips there, I think, for coaches as you're thinking about using film with your team at at any level in any age. But after we went through this film session and I taught them this scale, we went directly into playing a game, a 4 and 4 game, where the scoring was based on the shot selection scale. And so what I mean by that is uh, athletes, sorry, teams, got points based on the quality of shot they took, regardless of the outcome, whether it went in the basket or not. So if a team shot what I called a seven or a nine, and I was calling this out live during the game, if a team shot a seven or nine, they get seven or nine points immediately, regardless of outcome. If the ball goes in, those are just bonus points on top of the seven or nine they get if they take a seven or nine on our scale. Now, if a team takes a three or a five, they only get the points if the ball goes in the hoop. So really quickly, they start to learn that the quality of the shot is what is going to win them this game, and their play starts to change. Their decision-making starts to change, and their shot selection improves significantly because the team could win this game without actually making a bucket. If they shot a bunch of high-quality 7s and 9s, they're going to win the game, even if the ball doesn't go in the hoop. And the point of this is we're all about reinforcing the decision over the outcome. I want to teach these kids to make a great decision with the basketball, and I really believe that the skill and the outcome of being able to shoot it consistently is going to catch up with them making that perceptual decision, deciding to shoot it at the right time. And so as I was just reflecting on it and thinking about it, talking with the guys that are assisting me with this team, all of us were really, really pleased with how much 
the emphasis on shot selection changed how they played the game. And that was my big kind of takeaway was, especially at the young age, if, if we teach shot selection or the equivalent of that in your sport, it's going to impact how they play a lot more than teaching them uh, a certain set play or a certain system. If we can teach them principles and if we can teach them how to make the right decision, regardless of the outcome, it's going to totally change how they play. And I really think it can change the trajectory of their development. Um, we want to help them develop great habits at that young age because there are some of the athletes that I coach that uh, they can get away with taking bad shots right now. Maybe they're more athletic. Um, maybe they've developed sooner, whatever it might be. They can get away with it now, but it's going to catch up with them later. And so try and teach them the importance of making quality decisions. And the other part of it is not evaluating the quality of the decision based on the outcome. And so we're playing the shot selection game at practice, and during a quick water break, a transition, I, I pulled a kid to the side and said, hey, it, it looks like you're frustrated. What's going on, man? He said, well, I'm, I'm not making any shots. And I said, well, were they good shots? And he thought about it for a second. He said, well, some of them. I said, yeah, I agree with you. You took quite a few sevens. Now you took a couple fives too. But if you keep taking sevens, am I going to be mad at you? Kind of shook his head. No, I said, "Are your teammates going to be mad at you?" It's like, no. It's like, okay, then keep shooting the sevens. Let's eliminate the fives, and let's keep shooting sevens. And I just reminded him. I said, "A good shot is a good shot." When he said, "When it leaves your hands," I said, "That's great. That's all you can control. Keep shooting high quality shots." And I think it's really important that as coaches, we have some language to help them separate the decision from the outcome. That's what that scale is all about, evaluating the quality of the decision instead of just looking at did the ball go in the hoop or not. And so I would encourage you, whatever that is for your sport, figure it out, uh, come up with some language, talk with coaches. Hey, how can we help athletes separate the decision from the outcome here? Um, I, I think it's critical that we do that and we're really, really intentional about it. And that once we give them that language and framework, we reinforce it through the game. So the most powerful thing that I did was that we played a game where the scoring was based off that shot selection scale. They got rewarded for it. It reinforces it. That is absolutely critical. On to, uh, on to uh, practice number seven for a couple minutes. Uh, you know, my big takeaway from that practice was that simplicity is king. Simplicity is king at the young ages especially, but I really think all the way up through the older ages as well. We want to keep it simple. I'm really passionate about using simple games, using simple language, using simple constraints. I want to make it as simple as possible for athletes so that we avoid overloading their working memory, that their mind doesn't get overloaded with information, that they can play free with a clear mind, that they can be reading and reacting to the game. And also, I want to keep it simple so that I can maximize time on task, maximize the reps and decisions they're making in our practices so that they improve more. And I think it's so important for us to consider that as we're coaching our teams at whatever level is can I simplify? Where can I simplify? Why isn't this working? I think oftentimes the reason that things we are trying to do aren't working is they're too complicated or we've tried to, tried to give them too much too soon. Simplify it down one thing at a time, one step at a time. Make it simple. If it's not simple for you uh, or your coaches, it's not going to be simple for them either. And so I think it's really important, really, really important that we keep at the forefront of our mind the importance of just keeping it simple with our athletes. And especially if you are coaching youth teams or summer teams, AAU teams, you know, this 11-year-old basketball team that I'm coaching, I get two 90-minute practices with them a week. That flies by. That absolutely flies by. You know, with the ninth grade school team that I assist with, we get five 90-minute practices a week. That's a massive, massive difference in time. And so when you only get 
two contacts with your athletes a week for those 90 minutes, it really does mean you've got to prioritize and you've got to keep it simple. So again, we can maximize our time on task. We can maximize learning when we're actually there together. Because the challenge of any group invasion game, one team against another, is that we've got to somehow teach shared decision making. Right? We want athletes to individually grow and get better at their own skills and decision making. But with a game like basketball or any other group invasion game, we're also trying to coordinate the decision making of a group of five players at once. Because that's when a team is really special. When they're all five working together on the same page, they're, they're acting as almost one uh, mind or decision making machine, all five together. And so I think it's critical in our practices that we keep it simple so that we can hopefully allow them to do that. And yeah, as, as I was reflecting on it, it, it's so easy as coaches, I think, to overcomplicate things or to feel like if we're not constantly teaching something new or trying to coach and correct everything that we're not coaching. And that's just simply not true. It's simply not true. Oftentimes, I would say, all the time, especially at the young ages. Keeping it simple is better. Keeping it simple is better. It's better for them. It's better for you. Well, that does it for my reflections on practices six and seven. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen, and I hope these are valuable for you and your coaching. I hope there's some ideas here that you can take and apply to your context. Uh, Just a reminder that I'm hosting that coaching Zoom with Ben Wilkins, uh, associate head coach at Army, about how they develop leaders, and you can too. It'll be on Thursday, April 7th at 1 p.m. If you'd like to sign up to attend it live or get access to the replay, you can check out the link and the show details. I hope to see you there. And again, I really appreciate you taking the time to listen.